Hi, Donna Steitler here. I'm the Cuenca, Ecuador correspondent for International Living. And today we're going to talk about visas. Now I know it might seem a little scary getting a visa. It seems like a really big deal and you might be overwhelmed. Well, here's the first tip for you. Uh, there's companies that can help you with it, especially if you're a little bit afraid. There's companies that are sort of do-it-yourself. So you just uh, help gather the documents and they will lead you or give you translators names and help you along the way, but you're doing most of the work yourself. Uh, then there's law firms and there's quite a few and they're usually listed on expat pages for Ecuador and you can uh, go to them and they'll, they'll coddle you more and they'll help you more with the process. And so if you feel like you need a little extra help, that's another option. Now there's two types of visas. One temporary non-resident and then there's another one that is what you really want to go for which is your permanent residence. So a non-resident is that you're going to be here for a short stay and it's temporary and really as soon as you hit the ground in Ecuador you've got 90 days before you have to do anything and there's no fee for that. But you may, I say may because the rules always change, uh, need some proof of insurance. Uh, but let's say you want to stay longer. And why wouldn't you? You're in Ecuador. There's so much fun things to do. Well, you can get what they call a special tourist um, visa. And that will get you an allowance to stay here another 90 days. And there is a fee. And you can do, only do this once every year. Uh, if you want to stay longer, there's a one-year visa option, and uh, that's after you've exhausted your special tourist visa. Then uh, they only do this once every five years, so make sure you're choosing wisely. You have to prove that you have the financial ability and, and means uh, to live here for a year and how you get those funds, uh, proof of insurance, and of course, yes, there's a fee for this. Uh, you can also come on a work visa, and those are up to one to two years, and their um, main requirement you probably should know is that you have to be hired by an Ecuadorian company. So that's something to keep in mind. But let's say now you want to go to the second form of a visa, as a residence uh, visa, and of course you want that. You want to eventually get permanent uh, residency because you get a lot of extra benefits and don't have to worry about going back and forth from your home country or visiting out of, out of the country. Um, now the first one that you can get uh, kind of visa is called a pensioner. You know, it's like a retirement, uh, something you could easily qualify if you, um, especially if you have Social Security, you only have to prove $800 minimum a month to qualify for the pensioners and then another hundred for any dependent you have. Um, there's also now the second kind of a, of a visa, permanent, is a investment visa. Uh, you can get that by taking out a CD. You do have to keep it in the bank for three years and the minimum amount is 26250 uh, and you do have to have it, like I said, in an Ecuadorian bank. Uh, you can also do an investment visa uh, with property. So maybe you buy a house. The minimal property value is uh, $30,000. And it has to be, the property has to be in your name. Okay, so now what documents do you need? This is the hardest, hardest part. Of getting your visa because it takes quite a bit of time and you really here's my second tip stay in the home country until you get all these documents is so much easier now after I go through them you'll sort of understand um, the first document you really need is a criminal background record and they require that from the uh, FBI and your State Department as well. You do have to get them apostilled. 
Now, if you're like me when I started this process, I was like, what's that? A POS deal? I never heard of it. But it's actually the legal certification. It's an international process used to verify documents. It's not that hard to do, but you have to make sure you know where to get it from your country. Like, for instance, in the United States, I had to go to the Secretary of State. Um, the other thing you're going to need is uh, some kind of health insurance, proof of insurance. Now, when I got to Ecuador, quickly after, I was able to go down to the IESS office and put in for the public health system, which I love. It costs $64 a month for one person, and a second person, I think, is $12. So, it's not, not expensive, but that's something to look out for. Uh, if you're married, you're going to have to have your marriage license, so bear that in mind. Uh, and um, when I applied, you had to have a driver's license report pulled by like the Department of Motor Vehicles. And I had to have fingerprints. And so you need to get the fingerprints also uh, verified through a um, specific office that's um, legally required to do them and uh, so I think you need to sort of keep those kind of things in mind you know you can't do a fingerprint easily once you're in the location like Ecuador so try and get those kind of things done um, the other thing that firms will help you do and if you speak some Spanish you can probably do it as well but they'll help you make appointments like at the visa offices which the visa office nearest me is 45 minutes away, so it was really helpful to have someone uh, who spoke some Spanish and could help me through the process. Then once you uh, gather all the work, you'll be called in and someone will verify your visa information. And uh, after you white knuckle it for a few minutes, they'll usually approve it. Or if there's another piece of paper they want, uh, then they'll let you know at the time and just come back. You just come back once you get the approval then um, you're done you're done the only thing they'll do is um, they'll email you a copy of your visa certification and they'll do that like in 24 hours it, I mean it, my process did not take long so the bottom line is I think uh, Ecuador has made getting a visa very easy uh, easy peasy as a matter of fact you can do it if you have a little Spanish you probably could do it all on your own without any problem if you're a little leery get some help no problem so next time until next time ciao and buena suerte which means bye and good luck